just because it's not something that's really been done since China, you know? Yeah. And that wasn't even the world title. Yeah, the intercontinental title. But a lot of people compare me to her a lot. Just getting home after a wrestling-filled weekend, also an interview-filled weekend. I made the five-ish hour drive to Chicago for Bound for Glory weekend. I did a lot of interviews up there. And I asked you guys on Twitter and on Instagram, at Chris Van Vliet, which one I should post first. And I heard you guys loud and clear. It was this one. Tessa Blanchard that you wanted to see first and a huge thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this interview. It's a brand new collection RPG game that all the cool kids are playing. Uh, 10 million cool kids to be exact. That's how many players worldwide have downloaded the game in less than six months. And the best part about it is it's absolutely free to play. In Raid, you have the ability to personally customize your champions, like this guy. You can choose their artifacts and create a unique mastery build for each one of them. And look how good these graphics are. Yeah, this is a mobile game. I fly a lot, so uh, so if you ever sit next to me on a plane, uh, that'd be really cool. But also, I probably won't talk to you because I will be playing uh, this game right here. And I love the fact that the more I play, the better this Brock Lesnar looking dude here gets. And with more than 300,000 reviews, it has an almost perfect score in the Play Store. And the game is growing super fast and the highly anticipated new Faction Wars feature is now live. I love that it's called the Faction Wars. It's like DX versus NWO. It's like the Corporate Ministry versus the Heart Foundation. Faction Wars. You know what I'm talking about. There's an awesome new rewards program for new players where you'll get a daily login reward for the first 90 days in the game. So check out the link in the video description below to download Raid and you'll get 50,000 silver and a free Epic Champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. So a big thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video. Now please enjoy this very in-depth and very interesting conversation with Tessa Blanchard. Um, we've been talking about making this happen for a while, so thank you for finally making this happen. Thank you for driving five hours to make it happen. <laughs> ah, five hours, nothing. <laughs> now, nah, but I also talked to Michael Elgin. Uh, we're going to do an interview with uh, uh, with Tennille, so it's yeah. great. It's all working, and we're here at Bound for Glory. Yes. Yeah. Exciting day, exciting week. I, I, I tweeted out that we were going to do this interview, and people are like, they're very excited about this. As I'm they excited should about be. it. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are like, you know, She's the greatest women's wrestler in the world right now. I'm like, well, just remove the word women's. Like, you are. You're one of the best wrestlers in oh, the world right thank now. Thank you so much. But it's true, you know? And in your story's so interesting because I think a lot of people think because of who your father was that this was just predestined for you to become a wrestler. And that was not the case at all for you. No, I actually, I never wanted to be a wrestler growing up. I always wanted to do musical theater and be on Broadway one day. And growing up, my, uh, my family, like, put me in like the Charlotte Children's Theater in North Carolina and they put me in like anything theater and all through middle school and high school I did musical theater and that's what I always wanted to do um, and then my dream changed a little bit I turned 18 I left home and I was I worked in like a nightclub in downtown Charlotte I was hanging out with like a rougher crowd and just living life routine and sure I didn't really have a goal or anything. I was in college, but I didn't really have like a set goal of something that like I was really passionate about and wanted to do um, until I found wrestling. And I, I thought maybe I'll, I remember in 2012, the, the year my dad was inducted, just being in Miami with my brothers and sisters and being around wrestling and all of that, it, it sparked an interest maybe. And I really wanted to wake up at like 5 a.m. and go to the radio interviews and go to guest access with my dad and Arn and just be around wrestling. I thought it was so cool. Um, and then when I turned 18, left home, fast forward, I, I remember waking up one day and I was just like, Tessa, what do you want to do? And mm. I looked up a wrestling school for some reason. I uh, found out High Spots was like 20 minutes from my house at the time. And I showed up one day and talked to Michael Bacuccio, who owns High Spots. And uh, I was like, I want to be a wrestler. And he took me in the back warehouse. It was George South, Cedric Alexander, Caleb Conley, some local talents all in the ring. 
and they let me watch and then George called me in the ring and they let me hit the ropes and bump a few times and uh, by no means was I good but I like I fell in love with it I was like god yeah. this hurts but I love this yeah. I didn't even tell my family that I was wrestling because um, I didn't talk to my family for like a whole year when I left home uh, like changed my phone number everything oh wow and uh, Michael I remember it was like maybe six months into training and he pulls me out from the back warehouse it was like a Tuesday night and he was like Tessa come talk to me for a second and he was like uh, you can't train here anymore and I was like what why and he was like uh because I know your dad and if they don't know your training then it could be a problem and I'm like don't worry I'll handle it um so I, I remember I called my family and that's how I started talking to him again was no I way. told them that I was wow. wrestling and I invited them to come watch me train my stepdad and my little brother ended up coming like a week after, I don't think anyone really took me seriously, but um, I remember they showed up and me and Cedric were in the ring just like doing our thing. Like we just, he's someone who I'm so comfortable in the ring with and I just trust him more than anything. Like I, we can, we just know each other and we can go. And uh, I was like, all right, Cedric, let's do our thing. And so we're like going, going, going. And afterwards my stepdad like rolled up to the uh, turnbuckle and he was like, well, you're not good, <laughs> but you have it. He goes, now you got to go out there and you got to become undeniable. There it is. And that's, that's where it comes from. That yeah. always just, that stuck with me. So were you all in on you were going to be a theater actress? I, I don't think I ever took it like so serious, but it's something that I was super passionate about. I don't think it's something that I like hard tried to pursue and like realistically make it happen, but I really enjoyed just doing it. So what was the career path if it wasn't going to be wrestling? Honestly, I... I don't really know what it would be. I, huh. I have a bunch of different interests and passion. I was in school for business, um, but there was nothing that I really felt like, all right, this is it. This is what I'm comfortable with. But with wrestling, I get that feeling when I'm in the ring. I'm like, this is what I'm yeah. supposed to do. Well, as we sit here now, it's October. Uh, and what a year you've had. Like, <laughs> what, like, what an incredible year. If we take it back just a few weeks before, so it's like 12 months and a few weeks. It started really with all in for you, you know, and then up until now, like, are you able to step back from this and realize and appreciate what kind of year it's been? I think it's, it all just kind of seems like unreal to me a little bit still like this year. I've, when I first started wrestling, I was driving 14 hours for a show just to set up the ring and hopefully get an opportunity and make 75 bucks and sleep in my car and then turn around and drive 14 hours back home right um just because i wanted to pay my dues i wanted to like when i first started wrestling people would always say like you're only here because your family name you're only here because of this because of that anything except for hard work mm. and i would always say like you know my last name it might get my foot in the door it might get me in front of the right people it might get me an opportunity but the second you step into the ring it doesn't do jack shit for you so you've got to be able to back it up you've got to train and work out and live that lifestyle and become great because yeah. I, I never wanted to be good I want to be great I don't want to be passable I want to be one of the best in the world yeah. and you've got to have that mindset to live that lifestyle and that's where you're at now like <laughs> <laughs> you are I don't know <laughs> I'm I think I, I don't know this year's been crazy all in was like the when Cody asked me to be a part of it I just kind of was like really that was like unbelievable to me and then just that match and the feeling there was just unreal and then signing with impact and just transferring from like the knockouts to more intergender stuff and it, I don't know it's been it's been neat people keep asking like what's next like what's a goal of yours what do you want to do and I'm like I just want to wrestle some of the best in the world and I want to yeah. become one of the best in the world uh I want to make history in my own way you know like women are making history right now in sports and there's the first this and the first that and the first this and, it, and it's great it's so great for like the women's revolution but like, I want to find a way to make history in my way. Mm. And I feel like with impact and intergender wrestling, like I'm able to kind of do that in my own way. I think that when you signed with impact, a lot of people were expecting you to be in WWE. You know, you were part of the Mae Young Classic. We saw you in NXT. Why didn't that happen? Why didn't WWE happen? You know, I, I don't know. There was like a lot of, a lot of playing with my head a little bit. Um, I am not saying that I didn't have the opportunity to go there, but impact definitely felt right. I want to 
something that's important to me is I'm so confident in my own ability and my drive and like no matter what it is whether I'm waiting tables or in school or rest like I want to be the best at it like th- that's just how I've always been I want to be yeah. the best at it and I'm, I'm so competitive um but I wanted to become a star on my own I want to be out here I want to wrestle the the best in the world I want to I want to be different in my own way and make history in my own way and do that for myself and not have someone else take credit for it. Not saying that someone would, but it's just something that's important to me. My resume is important to me. I want to going to AAA to become the first uh, American women's champion and wrestle at the garden and, and travel all these, like I want to do that for me Yeah. before anything else. I don't know. (laughs) It's pretty crazy though to think that you and Tully are both active in wrestling. (laughs) At the same time. He texted me the other day. He goes, I'm at TV right now. And I'm like, what? You didn't even tell me. (laughs) Um, But no, it it is really, really neat. And it's all bias aside, the fact that he's my dad. I'm I'm his fan too. Like I'll watch old school brain busters like my dad and Arn. And I genuinely feel like they are so brilliant in this business. And it's such a waste if they weren't in the business in some aspect. Um, So for AEW to have him, he's so valuable. His mind is just the way that he thinks in, in wrestling, just he's, it's incredible. So I've learned so much from him. Do you remember what your earliest memory is of wrestling? So people ask me that all the time. And I remember like when I was little, my dad taking us, we went backstage to like a few things. I remember Hulk Hogan gave me like a chocolate chip cookie and catering. And then I remember, (laughs) here you go, brother. (laughs) The first time I actually saw my dad wrestle was in Lenore, North Carolina. We were uh, a small show and, I remember just thinking, God, this looks so real. And I was scared. Like I saw my dad in the ring and he was bleeding. And I was like, I tried to run up after the match and like security wouldn't let me. And I wanted to go in the locker. I'm crying. Um, They're like, your dad's okay. Like, don't worry. Um, But I remember just being so scared. (laughs) Wow. Did you watch it on TV before then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love old school wrestling. My favorite wrestler of all time is Johnny Valentine. I watch like him and Wahoo McDaniels. And it's like one of my favorite matches just because he's like the the coolest bad guy to me. Yeah, like I yeah. think he's just so cool. Um, so every time I see Greg Valentine, I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I love old school wrestling. What what specifically uh, did you learn from your father that you take with you in every match? How to be a star. Mm. Not a lot of people carry themselves and know how to present themselves as a star. It's like something that you can't teach almost, but something you can just acquire along the way. Um, And also, I remember my dad, when I was training with George South, I was, like, trying to get advice from my dad and stuff and on on certain things because he'll always help me. But he was like, there's nothing that I can teach you yet. And I didn't really understand that until now. And he's like, all right, now I can teach you. Like, where you are right now, now I can teach you. Wow. And I'm like, okay, now now I get it. Yeah. Um, so I'm picking up little things, just even still, like I'm still learning, still trying to get better, still like I'll watch matches back and there's like with my dad even and like he'll fix little things that I didn't even notice. Just the way that he looks, watches matches, the way that he watches someone's demeanor, the way that they are, the way that they carry themselves um, in and out of the ring in front of fans. Like uh, it, it's really unique. Mm. I feel like. I, it's obviously a per- good person to be sitting under the learning tree of. <laughs> I'm very blessed. My dad, my stepdad, my grandpa, I've learned so much from all of them, so I'm so blessed. It's been, you know, five years, right? Five years since you've started wrestling? Yeah, it'll be six in December. Wow. Okay, wow. It's going to be your wrestleversary. <laughs> wrestleversary. Sure, why not? D- you know, if it's, it's only been six years, what's six years from now going to look like, do you think? Gosh, I don't know. People ask me that. Because like, you're going to be 30 then. Yeah, I, I try not to, like... Cause I'm a very anxious person too. Like if I think too far ahead, I'll start like overthinking things right now. My main focus is making history in my own way and wrestling some of the best in the world. There's still people that don't want to wrestle. Um, for instance, Brian cage, I've wrestled him on the independence, yeah. but I would love to have a TV match with him, um, for a larger audience to see. He's one of my favorite people to wrestle. Um, Scorpio sky. I would love to wrestle him one day. I, I love wrestling the guys. I love yeah. wrestling the girls too. And our knockouts division is so amazing. But, um, I don't know. I like what I'm doing right now, and I try not to think like way too far ahead. But I've got goals. I've got dreams. <laughs> Did it take some, you know, convincing to allow them to let you be in a match like the one you were in with Sammy Callahan? 
You know, it's something that I've always been passionate about because I trained with the guys. That's the way I brought up. I was brought up like, and I feel like it's helped my timing, my transitions, my intensity, um, different things like that. But it was actually something they approached me with Mm. and it just kind of, it worked. It just was very natural, not forced. It just worked. Um, and I think that's why I love it so much. And in some of the guys, the way that they think, the way we're all so different, our characters, the way that we think we're all different human beings. Um, so I, I feel like I still learn something from each of them. To have the match with Sammy, I, I didn't know that we were going to be the main event until the night of. Um, they told us that night, and I was just – I thought they were kidding. Uh, like, I totally thought that they were – because they mess with us all the time. Sure, I just thought yeah, they were yeah, kidding. Yeah. Um, so that was special for me. That was my first pay-per-view – my only pay-per-view main event so far. Um, and then for it to be an intergender match was just, like – it's cool because it's a cool time for wrestling. It shows yeah. that wrestling is evolving. It shows that I've always been passionate about intergender wrestling too because a lot of people are so quick to write it off. They're just like, man and the woman, no. Um, but I strongly believe that there's a way to do it. And I think that after Sammy and I's match or even after Brian and I wrestled at Wrestle Circus on the Independence, and a lot of people saw that match and they're like, okay, I get it. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah, I love yeah. when people are like, all right, I understand you. Well, I think the best part about that match was Sammy didn't hold back at all. And I think that that's what made it a believable match. It, it wasn't a man and a woman wrestling. It was two wrestlers wrestling. Yeah. I, I don't expect him to either. I want them to bring it just as much. It's probably my adrenaline a little bit. And just uh, I, I love those kinds of matches where they don't hold back and – I'm going to look out for you. You're going to look out for me and we're going to kill it. Yeah. And I think that we really, we both wanted to prove something in that match. It was the main event. It was slam anniversary. It was an intergender match. It was Sammy and me. And, uh, it, it just felt special. Yeah. The moment we came back in the locker room, everyone was there and they were clapping and it was just like, this felt important. Can you understand the flip side of it? How people do have an issue with intergender wrestling? Oh, I understand both ways completely. And I think that there's just like any style of wrestling, you know, there's strong style, there's Lucha Libre, there's all these different styles of wrestling. I think there's a wrong way to do everything, but also like there's no right or wrong way to do everything, (laughs) if that makes sense. Um, But intergender wrestling, it's a style. I think that if a man goes out there and just straight up punches a woman in the face, it's probably not how we should be doing telling our story. Yeah, there's something about the punching that's not okay. <laughs> no, it's it's which is strange. You can power bomb someone, you can throw their head into the guardrail twice. Um <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about the, the punching that's like a, it's a strange line that can't be crossed. Well, I think it's probably like for some people Everyone views it differently. Some people have been through different things in their life. Maybe it's a trigger for something. Maybe some people just don't have a taste for it. It's just different. It's different for every person. But um, like I said, it's a style. I think that there's a way to do it and tell that story. But there's also this style of match that you and Sammy had, and there's a style of match that Joey Ryan has. It's it's intergender wrestling, but it's like very different styles of intergender wrestling. Oh, completely. Joey sounds so different and unique anyway. <laughs> right? But I, I know that, like, I think Eli Drake had a really big issue with yeah. having to face you. Yeah. Um, I never actually talked to him about that issue, like, face-to-face. But, like, Eli's a great guy. Uh, like, maybe he doesn't have a taste for it, and that's totally fine. Like, that's his opinion. That's, that's him, and it's totally fine. I didn't have a problem with him not wanting to wrestle me. There's been other people who, like, other guys who have said they don't want to have a, a match with me. It's fine. I don't take it personal. Like, mm. I get you. That's your taste. That's your views. It's how you perceive it. It's, it's fine. Um, but then there's, there's guys that do, like, that are fine with it and want to go out there and, like, tell that story with me. And I think that that's, that's really cool, too. I don't take it personal. You know, it's business. But the reality of the situation is you're super over right now. If I had the opportunity to have a match with you, I'd be like, hell yeah. Like, wouldn't it make sense to do that? I guess so. But if you put... Maybe he's putting like his own what he thinks about it and his views like first, which is totally understandable too. Um, you know, a lot of people have like and Eli, he's he's very strong in the way he feels about wrestling. Um, yeah, and he's, he's very old school. Yeah, he's very old school, and like I'm a, I'm a fan of his work. Um, and the fact that he he explained it to me too. We were uh, DMing like for a second, and he he like explained to me why because it blew up on Twitter a little bit, and I think people like jumped to conclusions and stuff. And I have no ill will towards him about it. Like everything's cool. We're friends. Yeah. Like it's it's no big deal. Well, I, we we actually had an interview. I did an interview with him. Mm-hmm. He, he talked a little bit about it. He said that 
he also has an issue with like big guys, muscular guys like him fighting someone who's really small. He's like, it just doesn't maybe seem that believable. And I'm like, dude, I get it. It's your yeah. old school way of thinking. But you know, Eli's in obviously great shape. You're obviously in great shape. I was so blown away to hear that you haven't worked out your whole life, that this was something that's fairly oh, yeah. recent. I, when I even first started wrestling, I wasn't like huge into weightlifting. I, Honestly, I, I didn't really know how to work out. I didn't know how to do my arms and my back and my legs and my chest and my, I didn't know how to do all that and isolate each body part. And, um, but I would watch YouTube videos and like, uh, Moose and I work out a lot and he would help me. And then I just kind of like started learning more and more and I got to know my body and what works for me and then trying different diets and working with a coach and like seeing what works for me. Now I'm like pretty familiar with myself and I, I know how to get in certain shape or like. Sometimes I just want to eat cookies all the time. <laughs> cookies are so good. <laughs> you you lived with Moose. Is that yes. why you worked out all the time together? Yes, he was my roommate for a year and a half, two years. What's so he's it, like one of my best friends. What's it like living with Moose? It's an experience. <laughs> I tell him <laughs> that. Because I'm like, I'm very clean. I'm very, sometimes I'm like, maybe I have a little bit of OCD. I like things the way I like them. And Moose is, Moose has a lot of stuff. Moose has... <laughs> Uh, we had a room in our house for his shoes. Just his shoes? Just his shoes. It was his shoe closet. This whole room. Oh, okay. He used to be sponsored by Nike, too, so he has, like, tons of shoes. And he's the sad thing is he's given, like, half of them away to charity, and he still has a shoe room. Where is, where's <laughs> home for you now? Uh, so I have a place in Long Beach, and I also have a place in Tijuana. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. How much time do you spend in Mexico? Well, I decided to get an apartment there because... I'm wrestling in Mexico a lot more often too, and I'm um, near the beach, and it's it's just so nice, and um, it's kind of like my getaway. Also, I just I love it. Um, but then in Long Beach, because I help train with Wow, and I help yeah. the girls out there, and sometimes I need to be there for like a week or longer at a time, so it just makes sense to instead of like crossing the border every yeah, day. And sure. Did you think you were going to be able to also do WOW while still doing Impact? No. So WOW approached me and uh, David McLean said they wanted me to be a part of WOW. And I was like, oh, I just signed with Impact. I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and he contacted Impact and talked with them. And and then they, they kind of like both let me know like, hey, you can do this. And I'm like, okay, awesome. Let's do it. Yeah. And I was going through like some changes in my life at the time. And I just got out of a relationship. And I was like, you know what? Let's move to Cali. I was living in Florida, um, and I was like, let's just do it. Let's jump. And yeah, your Wikipedia says you live in Brooklyn. Does it? I yeah. think anyone can edit those, so, though. So there you, there you go, Wikipedia people. You're wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. You're <laughs> I can't live the right there. It's coast. too cold. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, a little bit. Too cold. We're in Chicago right now, and it's... The West Coast is nice. You get, like, cold. that fall weather. And yeah. How different is the style of wrestling in WOW versus what you're doing here in Impact? It, well, it's different mainly because I'm doing a lot of intergender now too. And wow is an all women's promotion. But uh, one thing that really drew me to wow was I've always been super passionate about basics, like know your basics, footwork, just basic things in the ring, because that's what George always drilled in mm. into my head when I first started. And I always think that if you get too far ahead of yourself, um, your basics are always going to come back to bite you in the ass if you don't know them. Like, I'm, I'm a strong proponent for that. Uh, so with the WOW girls, uh, some of them are pro girls, like independent girls, and some impact girls are on there. Uh, but a lot of them, we start from scratch. Wow. So we do uh, auditions, and they come, and they audition, and, and they'll come to the training school, which we have in Long Beach, and I'll start them with, like, bumps and hitting the ropes. And I'm not the head trainer. Selena Majors is there. Uh, but for season one and two, I would start them from scratch and like teach them wrestling, which I love, like just the beginners. I don't know everything, but like I'm really confident in my basics, like footwork and hitting the ropes and just the little in between details. Yeah. Um, how quickly would you say if they come in knowing nothing, how quickly can they do a match? I think it varies with like different girls, their athleticism, um, we try them out for like a few weeks and stuff and see if they like if they're going to make it or not. Uh, there's two girls in particular. One's her name's the beast. And then another one, her name is faith. Um, and these two in particular, they, we started them from scratch and within six to eight months, like I think that they've grown so much in them from season to season. I've wrestled both of them now and I feel like they've both grown so much in like they are girls that started at wow and we've groomed them and given them a character and, uh, 
taught them everything that they know now. So they'll even come and like watch some independent shows and just they love wrestling. They're, yeah. they're very passionate about it, and you can tell passion is something that you can't teach. And I think in the ring, you can tell when someone's passionate and when someone's just kind of doing it. Sure. Um, but there are two that, that started from scratch, and I think that they're, they're great. Do you go back and watch your matches? Oh, all the time. Okay. Because I'll watch things, and there's yeah. things that I don't like or things that I would change or maybe little things that I see that maybe someone wouldn't even notice. Yeah, but yeah. I'm so nitpicky. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's the only way to improve right, with anything that you do. Yeah. Um, did you watch Fighting With My Family? I did. Well, obviously. And it, well, my mom messaged me, and she's like, I saw your face. And I'm like, yeah? Mom. <laughs> um, that was a cool experience, though, because I literally I was in my apartment in Florida, and I got a call from WWE, and they said, uh, hey, we need you to fight to Cal- uh, California tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, what for? They're like, we'll tell you when you get there. And I'm like, what? Were you like, this is it? I've got the job? Like, I'm going to be... I was confused. Because obviously you didn't know it was about a movie. Oh, I didn't know anything. Yeah. So okay. they were like, I need you to pack for either three days or three weeks. And I'm like, that's quite the difference. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so I landed, they had someone pick me up, took me to my hotel, and I'm there. They gave me an address to be at the next day. I show up to the studio. It was myself and three other girls, and there was a ring set up, and it's uh, Dave Taylor's there, a WWE ring. Uh, Thea Trinidad, who's Zelina Vega now, yeah. was there, um, and they had us in the ring rolling around, trying some stuff out, working with each other, asked us if we could uh, do certain moves. Um and then like took some photos, looked at us, like our body types and whatnot, I guess to compare with the actress. And we found out, and they, at the end of the day, they ended up telling me that I was staying and sent the other girls home and told me what we would be doing. And I ended up actually staying there for a few months. Wow. Um, they put me up in a hotel in Studio City for like a few months. We trained every day, um, worked with like different people from Hollywood and stunt coordinators and whatnot. And uh, The Rock ended up coming and training with us and, uh, what? Which is very cool, because I think a oh, lot of people yeah. see The Rock's name attached to a project like that, and they go, oh, yeah, he just showed up for his scenes and then, you know, basically told them what to no, do. No, he showed up. He was so hands-on with our matches, and uh, I actually learned a few things. from. I remember actually in training, this is funny, he he was, uh, I forget what we were doing, we were doing something, but he pinned me, and then I kicked out, and he hit me in the face, and I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> um no, but it, it was a cool experience. And then when we had the match at the Staples Center, I wasn't supposed to go to the UK. It was supposed to be another girl in the UK because they weren't going to get me a work visa. Um, so I was just supposed to do all the stunt doubling in, in America. And when we go to the Staples Center, uh, Thea and I had the match. It was, they treated it as an extension of Raw. Right. Raw came out like hyped up the crowd. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and afterwards, his manager came and grabbed me and Thea and said he would like to see us in his locker room. So we went there, met his family. Um, and he just talked, he had no idea that I was uh, my dad's daughter. He just thought it was like a uh, indie name or like a wow. worker name. Um, and then he had like put over my wrestling and like talked to me about my wrestling. And uh, the things that he said like really meant a lot because he didn't know who I was. Uh, like that he just thought I was good. Um, yeah. And so then when he found out that I was my dad's daughter, he was like, that's crazy. <laughs> um, but this is crazy. You trained with The Rock. So you basically had a match with The Rock. I guess. I mean, kind kind, kind of. (laughs) I don't know. But I went home after that, and then they called me like in a week, and they said, we're sending you to the UK, and I went there for a few months. Wow. And lived in London, and uh, we traveled around to do like the different scenes and whatnot. It was just overall a really cool experience. Good thing you weren't signed somewhere, because you wouldn't have been able to do any of this. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. (laughs) Totally. But like, if you were with Impact, they wouldn't have been able to be like, yeah, take four months off to... Probably not. ...film a movie, you know, where it's not even you. But if if your mom saw you in the movie, are you actually... Like, is your face actually in the movie? So I was watching it, and I... I think you can you can tell anyone who knows like my wrestling or like as a fan like you can tell it's my wrestling mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. like watching it I can tell it's me but maybe that's just me I don't know Did uh, did Rock give you some advice that you know you carry with you now Um something that was like really cool was this was after the movie was filming he followed me on social media and I had posted a I had just gone through like a little bit of a hard time in my life and I was like really hard dieting like all in in the gym like uh, I was going through a breakup at the time and I was just like focused on like being the in the best shape that I could and just I wanted 
to just drown myself in my dieting and my workouts and just wrestling. Mm. Um, and I posted a picture in the gym and it was like just flexing and I don't know, just in the gym. <laughs> I like that and you're making he, the flexing face. There. He messaged me and he said, uh, Hey, uh, what's your phone number? I need to give you a call. Uh, and I was like, I sent it to him and I didn't know what was going on. I was at the ring and I got a call and it was him. And he was like, uh, you look like you've stepped up your training. You look just next level. Like, uh, what are you going through? And I'm like, wow. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy that you can just tell that from like one picture. Wow. And we ended up having like a good like hour conversation where he just like talked to me about life and like gave me like real sound advice. And he acted as a sounding board for like some things that were like, it was just really like, like he didn't have to do that. That was, he was very down to earth and just, it was very genuine and he told me like, Hey, this is my number. Save it. Like if you feel like that again, like let me know. Wow. Um, and that was just like really, really cool to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So have you reached out to him since? Uh, we, he, he messaged me not too long ago and was like, I see what you're doing. Like, keep it up. Like good work. Yeah. And like every, every now and then not nothing consistent, but like, uh, the fact that he even reached out like that in any capacity is like, that's a good person. Like yeah. someone who probably has every right to have a huge ego and is, has every right to not do that. It's yes. just the fact that he did. That's really, really neat to me. We've had him on the show a bunch of times and he's always just been so kind. Yeah. It's like, you realize you're the most famous person <laughs> in the world. And you don't like, he, Rock always says though, it's, uh, it's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're mopping the floors. It doesn't matter if you're the star on the show, the camera guy, it doesn't matter what he treats you all the same. Yeah. That's, you don't find that in everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since you mentioned you'd like to have a match with Cage, if Brian Cage remains the impact champion, why not have a match with him for the title? I am not saying no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> never say never. Like there's no reason that you can't, like you were knockouts champion. Amazing. But there's no reason you can't be the actual champ. You know, who knows? I, I get that like on social media sometimes. And like, I've thought about it and stuff. It doesn't really seem just cause it's not something that's really been done since China, you know? Yeah. And that wasn't even the world title. Yeah. The intercontinental but title. A lot of people compare me to her a lot and, I don't know. I think that would be like a, if that were to ever happen or if that were ever to be reality, like that would be another way that I could make history in my own way. What about the X Division title? Yeah, you know, that, that's tonight. I know. Um, <laughs> I'm really, really focused on it. You know, OVs like they've been just poking at me and poking at me like week after week after week after week. And uh, Sammy and I had a great match, but Sammy's like he's always got a trick up his sleeve. Um, I'm hoping that tonight's a little bit different. Uh, but my main, fo I've got like tunnel vision tonight, like OVE and the X division championship, because if I win that, then I do have option C. Yeah. Um, but one, th one thing first, let's but, you know, here's the thing. There's, there's been plenty of talented women wrestlers over the years. There's been plenty of intergender matches. What's different about you? How have you been able to take it to this next level? You know, that that's something I've been asked before and, I don't know. I believe in myself so much. I believe in my ability. I believe in my drive and my work ethic and some things I think maybe even my acting background has helped like take over different moods and different certain scenarios or yeah, yeah. to be, I don't know. For me, some things just, it just feels natural. It just feels real. It feels when I'm in the ring, I become that person and I, that becomes my predicament or my situation. And I got to get through it. And it just, it's real to me. I don't think I'm memorizing anything or memorizing a spot or I don't feel like that. I, I genuinely like become that person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, and a lot more people are going to see this with you guys going to access. I think this is a big, big step up for impact, especially that, you know, we're, we're used to watching eight o'clock Monday. That's raw. And Wednesday, you've got your options at eight o'clock Friday. It's SmackDown eight o'clock Tuesday on a TV channel that a lot of people get. I feel like this is going to take things up even out of the frame with this one, even more. See, so we did there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how excited are you for this access deal to happen? Or oh, the deals happen, but you guys I'm are I'm so be on. pumped. I've been, well, I've actually been working with access a lot with WOW. So sure. uh, they're based in LA. So I would go to their offices a lot just to do 
stuff outside of wrestling too. They'd have me like hosting their summer slams or I hosted one of their rock shows and uh, just different like hosting things that they would have me do uh, through WOW. But now the uh, impact is there. I think it's great. The staff there is amazing. Um, the channel's amazing. I think to have to be on the channel with New Japan and with WOW is really cool. Um, but it's a huge step up. I think that we needed it, and I think that we deserve it. And I think that our roster and what we have is an amazing alternative. I don't think we are competing with anyone with what we have. Um, so to have that larger platform is just, it's a huge blessing for us. Why, why was Impact the right fit for you? A lot of people ask me Stop. that, Stop. Oh, man. I keep ah. asking these questions you've been no, asked before. No, no, no. It's okay. Because here's the thing, and, and it's no disrespect to Impact. I love I love Impact, and I've been a fan for years. But I think people see you in Impact, and they go, oh, that's cool. So, like, when are you going to go to WWE or AEW? And I don't. Th I think that, there's, unfortunately, people discount, you know, what you're doing here. Sure. I can see that. Um you know, I, I think it was just a gut feeling. It felt right. And a lot of the times, even with matches, sometimes I, I have a gut feeling about something. And sometimes I'll say something, sometimes I won't. And then the times that I don't, I'm like, damn it, I wish I said something. It, it happened this weekend where I was like, I had a gut feeling and I didn't say anything and I should have. Mm. Um, but with this, it Moose had been trying to get me to come over for a while. Brian had been trying to get me to come over for a while. And um, I, I had been asked to do a tryout match maybe like it was moose's first pay-per-view because i came to support him and i was asked to do a tryout match that week at the tapings and i ended up just saying no and i didn't really feel comfortable there backstage i when i first started i was still very new and a lot of girls i i thought i didn't really know much about the indies when i started but i thought everyone just got along <laughs> and a <laughs> boy was i wrong um you know I, when i first started the the indies were hard for me like uh, i would have people say things about my name i would say they would think that i just got certain bookings or whatnot because of my name or i got opportunities too early or before i could really back it up and you know maybe it's true maybe, maybe it's true whatever um but some girls can be really mean, like really mean. Um, and I, I didn't have like a great feeling there. And maybe, maybe I was like quick to judge and whatnot because right now, like I love our locker room. I love working here. And when they offered me a contract, I was hesitant, but I was like, you know what? Two years let's do it. Let's jump. Um, and it was a gut feeling and I did it and I don't regret it. I feel like I've learned so much here just from Gail Kim, um, from Jimmy Jacobs. Uh, you know, I, I, I've always felt confident about, uh, confident about promos and whatnot, but Jimmy Jacobs has a way of like turning the switch to like a next level and mm. the way he thinks about things and his, the, his, his mind is so creative. Oh yeah. Um, so I learned so much from him. Gail, she's so athletic. She's one of, I honestly think she's one of the best women's wrestlers of all time. And I don't think she got the credit for that enough. Um, so having a match with her, that was a dream. And to have her last match with her, that was a dream. Um, but I, her being our agent, I learned so much from her. And now working with the guys, working with D'Lo and Dawn and Scott and uh, Chris Sabin and their their minds also like the way that they work because they've been through it they've experienced it all so to work with them and learn from them is uh it's great because they they genuinely care about the end product it's not about something being passable they care so much that they don't mind taking the time to get there mm -hmm. it's not like all right let's shoot this one take all right that was good enough it's yeah. like no this can be better here yeah. and this can be better here and they analyze it and it's yeah. like they they don't want it to be good they want it to be great so they don't mind taking the time that's your mantra yeah, yeah. i love it i yeah. love it it just it's a great fit but and and it's been very helpful for them because your great work ethic and your great in-ring performances have really helped them you know kind of put their name back on the map well i don't know i'm just i'm i love being here i love working i don't feel here. like you take compliments very well i don't know i get awkward <laughs> well, you are but you know you're obviously uh very confident in your abilities you know you don't need someone else to tell you that but you know you're doing Incredible work, and I, I, want, I want to acknowledge you for everything you have done. Oh, thank you so much. Seriously, thank you. No, and uh, it's, it's so exciting to see how far you've come in this relatively short period of time, knowing that you have 20 more years or something left. If, this, we're just getting started here. We're just getting started. Just getting started. Uh, so thank you. I want to be super respectful of your time. So thank you for making this happen. Oh, thank you. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm so excited to see what's going to happen for you next. Me too. I don't even know. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's an interview you guys have been asking for for months and months. And finally, Tessa Blanchard and me were in the same place at the same time. What a conversation. And wow, as we get this shot lined up here, what a shirt. We'll just move the seatbelt out of the way there. Vague goals get vague results. Uh, if you want to grab one of those shirts, the link is down below in the description. And while you're down there, make sure to subscribe. I did a bunch of interviews at Bound for Glory weekend. Uh, Tennille Dashwood is on the way and Big Mike, Michael Elgin. So uh, subscribe, turn on those notifications so you know exactly when those interviews will drop. So many people say Tessa Blanchard is one of the best female wrestlers in the world. Remove the word female from that sentence. Tessa Blanchard is just one of the best wrestlers in the world. It doesn't matter who she steps into the ring with. It's an incredible match. She's doing some great, great work in Impact right now. And whether she stays in Impact long term or whether she does end up going to AEW or WWE or wherever, you know the matches that she's going to put on are going to be classics. And guys, guys, she's only 24 years old. Oh, man. The future is so bright for her. The future is just so bright for wrestling in general. I mean, think of how many young stars there are right now that are like in that early to mid 20-ish range, which means, guys, we've got great wrestling on the way for the next like 15 or 20 years as these people, you know, continue to just keep getting better, like Tessa Blanchard, like Riho, like MJF, like Austin Theory, like Leo Rush, like, 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 whoever. I'm just, you know, you're gonna like probably say in the comments, oh, how come you didn't name this person who's in their mid-20s? Well, you know what, you know what I'm saying? You get the point. There's so many great young wrestlers Tessa is a great example of that, so I really enjoyed this conversation. Please drop a comment below and let me know what you thought of this uh, conversation. And, like I said, Tennille and Big Mike coming up soon.